Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for another episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinists. In this episode, we are going to walk through the steps for maximizing EDM throughput, utilizing our software and our tool changer. Before we get started on getting into the, the burns that are going to go into this block, I wanted to talk about the importance of, of learning and growing. Um, as I got started doing the EDM process, uh, I did it one man, one mold. So it was very, I got to make the trodes, burn them and do everything. Well, today it's compartmentalized more and it's not to, to make anybody do less work. It's actually to get more done more efficiently so that we can be more competitive. I'm interested to know how you guys uh, do your burning uh, in your shops. Uh, this way was new for me and it was very difficult. Uh, and I came across a, co a quote recently that that kind of summed up this this process for me um, I'm just very I guess reluctant to try this process but uh, the quote goes like this it says you either hate to lose enough to change or you hate change enough to lose that was me I really didn't want to change the way I was doing it but I knew that people were doing it better than me and what I learned hopefully is a culmination of what I'm going to show you today. If you're watching this video, you're hopefully you're looking to learn and grow. And I commend you for that because everything's changing faster. Every, the computers go, the software, the machines, everything's getting better. And we need to take advantage as much as we can. This is going to be the list of the things you're going to see in this video. We're going to try to make it in order so that this hopefully will make sense and you can apply something from what you can see today. Uh, first, you're going to figure out what was cut, what was burned. We're going to design the electrodes. We're going to pull those electrodes, make programs, cut those electrodes. We're going to inspect them. We're going to decide on overburn. We're going to um, post the output file from Symmetron into our Eagle machine here, or our EDM machine, and then minimize the amount of errors by doing that because I've done a lot of fat fingering of electrode numbers, which will destroy a block or an electrode. And then we're gonna do a dry run, and then we're gonna run this whole program, all 11 electrodes in, in one shot and try to fill up the tool changer as much as we can. We're gonna start with the very first electrode, and this electrode is um, gonna be done through quick split, which typically quick split works very well, but this one's very uh, unique. So we're going to make this use, utilizing surfaces. Uh, Brandon's got this figured out. So I'm just going to run through this first electrode just to show you what it's going to look like um, and how it's going to burn this area that's very intricate across this little lip. And then we'll get into the rest of the trodes and how they get pulled. All right, here we are. We got this block. We got all of the electrodes designed in here. And I kind of want to just show all of it on so you can see what we're doing complete. I'm going to turn them off. Turn on one of them with our block. We're going to do a simulation. You can see this is what it should look like. And that's really what we're burning is this little undercut and radius around here. And then that's what it should look like. So from here, we want to be able to post this and give it all the information to our Ingersoll sinker. So we're going to do EDM setup. It's going to show all the electrodes, but we want to just focus on the one. So this first electrode has a has a, a 3D orbit, 24 VDI finish. Um, there's a lot of other information in here that the start location and locations, and all this comes through most not everything We're, we've got a lot of it figured out but there's still some to do but the surface contact is a big thing the overburn and the surface finish those are the three main things and then you export that out and we make an export file that we will then bring into the eagle we'll do that now okay from here we're going to go to the process we're going to grab all the electrodes and we're going to export them using this button and it'll make an export file that we're going to then bring in Dot ing to the eagle sinker hit ok and it will save that file and this is what that file looks like save it on a flash disk and bring it out there
Here are the trodes that we're going to be burning into this block. There's about 11 different electrodes. Um, and what we're going to be doing, you can look at my sheet here. Each electrode has a different setting in some way. We're, we have to qualify each one where we're going to, what kind of finish we're going to get, uh, what the overburn is going to be, and how many electrodes we're going to need for each individual location. Here's our set of electrodes. There's 11 different electrodes. And I kind of want to just talk real briefly about how I used to do these electrodes. I used to take a ground blank and an angle plate, and I would touch off the top of the electrode to the workpiece, and I would get a number from that point down for each individual electrode. The way we do it now is a lot different. We actually use the electrode bottom, the feet, as the zero in the CAD system, and that is actually the same as the top of the, uh, the chuck in the EDM machine. And then we use the bottom of the block as our pickup point for our workpiece. So I just want to cover that real quick. This is just a, a mind shift on how you do it. Initially, I did not trust this at all. I thought it would not work. I couldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to make up, make one setup and one Z pickup for all of the different electrodes. But if you inspect them correctly and you get them in there just right, the numbers work. The numbers don't lie. It does work well. Um, but I do recommend doing it and doing it yourself to prove it out. Once you do, you'll never do it differently. Or, or you may come up with a better way. But what you're trying to do is minimize your amount of setups, your, your, your error. So you can globally move all your things together if you set up correctly. Um, so we're going to walk through this. But I wanted to show all the different electrodes, all the different sheets. For each, each electrode has a different overburn, potentially a different overburn, a different finish. It all depends on what you're trying to do with it or the amount of electrodes that is required for the job. Some you can get away with one. What we're doing today, I'm using one electrode to do the rough and finish all the way down to the number that we're looking for. For this particular block, the tolerances allow us to be off a little bit. Um, and because we have to bench it afterward, if we're, if we have a wear of 1000, that's totally going to be acceptable. This is going to be a great way to show you how this works. I'm going to take tool, which is actually tool 10. This is our first electrode. This is the label we have for it. This is what it looks like. What I want to show is that each strode has individual settings. And we're going to go into the E condition, which is basically all the, the information about that burn. And I'm going to open it up just to show you. So you have a certain contact area. Uh, some of this information comes in good. Some of it not. We're working with both... Um, the, the Ingersoll ED, Eagle EDM and also Symmetron to try to communicate this information as best we can. So we got a lot of different options. What kind of electrode is it? We're just going to do a standard. Um, we got surface area, depth of erosion, and surface finish is a is a big thing, and that helps us figure out uh, how many electrodes we need. The finer the finish, the more trodes you need. Um, and basically how big is the burn. So there's a lot of factors. A lot of this is figured out. We're not going to go into it that deep, but we do want to show you the overall utilizing this tool changer to get all these burns done to where we can leave it at night and it's going to be done in the morning. I want to point out some things on this block that we're doing. Um, we cut this as good as we can, and there could be an argument for what you could cut, what you can burn, what you can get away with. For us right here, there's a deep rib that goes all the way through a couple different sections. So we're definitely going to use the EDM process to burn that out. Uh, there's a very small area up here that needs to be very sharp. Um, it makes a steel condition that we don't really care for. So we're going to try to control that very well and we can do it good with the EDM. But as we do all these different burns, they all have to be specifically put in the machine 
Um, exactly right. And the more information we can supply to the EDM machine, the more accurate, the faster they'll burn, the more efficient we'll be. All right, we're here with everything in the machine, all the trodes in the tool changer, the program posted from Symmetron. We're getting ready to hit start. We did a little test spot just to see how it was burning, but now we're gonna run it through the night, shut the lights off and see what it looks like in the morning. See you in the morning. All right, we came in in the morning. What I'm trying to do is see how well it burned down in there. It looks like it did its job. It's difficult to tell with the video here, but this is a success. It ran through all 11 electrodes, did what it was supposed to, and all the electrodes are there and we are done. I hope you enjoyed our episode of Learn to Burn today. I hope that you could take something home that is worth applying in your own shop. Um, I do want to say that I appreciate everybody's comments that I've gotten lately at trade shows and um, online through the comments. Uh, it means a lot to me that what I'm showing is helpful because I learned, I learned this way. I learned visually. I learned how to get all this stuff to work. Um, most of it's trial and error. And some of it's just dumb luck. And then some of it is like, I don't believe that's going to work and I end up trying it and it does work. So uh, hopefully one of those attitudes reflects yours and you're willing to give something a try that you haven't seen before. See you next time. Another episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinists. With Practical Machinists and I just really don't care for that one. Let's do that again. Totally nervous. Practical Machinists. Okay. <laughs>